Now entering Nerdist.com. Hey there, everybody. How are you doing this fine Monday morning or whatever morning you happen to be tuning in? Hope you're doing well. Hey, guys. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a fun time, uh, fun weekend, fun, safe weekend. Yeah. Um, or a dangerous weekend. Oh, man. Or a dangerous weekend. Uh, especially, it's a cold one out there today. Or a warm, or a warm one, one, depending on where you live. Hopefully Maybe you guys are, are uh, you know, In a safe. volcano. Yeah. If you're in a volcano, that's awesome. I want to live there. Yeah. Do you have a uh, Airbnb I can rent <laughs> yeah. for the month of Did you see October? that? I saw this. Someone in downtown LA was renting out a tent on Skid row on airbnb for ten dollars i night. love that that's genius yeah i'm gonna do that in my backyard mm, urban it's so urban so fresh so real i mean hey if you rent that out every day of the month you can not afford rent you at can any still not today. afford rent and you'll have nowhere to live because someone's in your tent <laughs> someone's in your tent. uh, uh just didn't have wi-fi <laughs> <laughs> no but, it's but got, guys it's got cable it's guys. got hbo prime <laughs> Hulu Prime. What is it? Amazon Prime. It's a fake service (laughs) cobbled together from Amazon, Hulu, and HBO Go. I love it. Um, guys, we got a fantastic show for you today. Probably, I would say, the best one that's ever been done. This Um, is my favorite episode. Definitely the handsomest guests. Um, Like, I don't know. I don't know how they managed to do everything they do and still. I mean, I'm just fine time look, to do a yeah, podcast. I mean, on I, top we of appreciate that. them coming in. Yeah. Um, we've been trying to get them on the the, the show for a while. Yeah, but their uh, schedules no, are so goddamn busy. Yeah, and the them. representation, uh, real real assholes to deal with. Yeah, they're they're looking for new yeah. management. If you're if you're in exactly. the industry, um, so we you know we appreciate they're really cool guys. Uh, they got a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, Go, definitely, definitely. There, you know, check out everything they got coming up. Yeah, you uh, might know them from uh, I Love Lucy. Or yeah. uh, The Matrix Reloaded. Yep. Or, uh, oh God, how can I forget? Uh, they were producers on uh, the uh, the seminal album, uh, Britney Spears Toxic. Yes, and they also, uh, for a brief stint, they did voiceover work on uh, the Harold and Kumar cartoon. That- yes, and uh, uh, I, heard, I think they, I think they did, they did some uncredited uh, background voices on uh, Tiny Toon Adventures. Yes, yep, yep, definitely did that. Uh, they actually came up with the concept art for Phineas and Ferb. So, oh wow, yeah, but it wow. got it got altered in in post production. But- <laughs> Frickin' post, goddamn, every post. time fixing it in post. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> they also invented the granola bar. Yeah, they did. They're really cool guys uh, and, and very modest. Too. Very modest. Um, happy to have them on. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy them and enjoy everything that they got to say mm-hmm. uh, that they have to say. I know uh, I did. I enjoyed them tremendously, and yes. uh, they're really cool guys. So uh, I guess let's yeah. Without further them, ado, without further ado, today, today we, we learn number seventy-seven with, with Razzle and Dan. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. Hello and welcome to Today We Learn Post Oscars Edition. Post Oscars Edition. Fun fact: yeah. this is a pre-Oscars recording. This is a pre-Oscars recording, and uh, this is, you know, where we were so jealous that Dan and I couldn't host the Oscars mm-hmm. this year, despite we, repeated letters, listen, text messages, DMs. I mean, here's grinder. The thing. Here's the thing. Messages. Our Kickstarter failed miserably. Yeah, our Indiegogo our, it, literally caught on fire. It caught on fire, and uh, we were like, you know what? Let's do a let's do a little fun fun little thing here, and we'll do a hostful. We'll we'll do a a half an episode hostful because yeah. you guys don't want to hear. Listen, us for a you guys, episode. you guys had to listen to all this Hollywood stuff last night. You're probably tired. Maybe stayed up late. Maybe ate too many appetizers. I know I did, I, or I will. <laughs> I watched the Oscars last night, tonight, uh-huh. tomorrow. Whenever you guys are listening to this, we recorded this the day before the Oscars. Yes. Uh, so I watched the Oscars tomorrow. Yeah. And I was so still bummed that the Lego movie got stopped. Yeah, I was, uh, but I, you know, I was shocked when uh, they rushed on the stage and dropped a bunch of Legos and people just kept, they kept stepping on them. I don't know it why anyone was wearing shoes. It was nuts. It, Sorry, I watched this. I watched an early recording of the Oscars. Spoiler alert, if you don't know, Hollywood records all of this in advance. They do. It's all pre-taped yeah. in front of a live studio audience from the beautiful home in Burbank. Yes. they. Ju- the only thing they film on the Sunday is the live studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> and the red carpet. Yeah, they get they get them back there for uh, pickup shots. <laughs> yeah, they do the red carpet and the uh, audience for the pickup shots and the B-roll. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, 
My, I, I gotta admit, I was, I was so, I was watching the Oscars, but I, I wasn't watching the Oscars, Dan and Aristotle over there. You're listening, so I'm going to talk to you as well because we're, this is a hostful episode. Yeah, we it's have, full. It's bursting at the it's brim with bursting hosts. at the brim. With, so with just us, but I was watching the Oscars and I was, I couldn't focus on the Oscars. Dan. No, no, why not? I was too focused on how upset I am. At the new Aquaman. Oh yeah, the new I <laughs> can't can't I'm get gonna, I can't, can't get even... Jason Momoa out of your mind. I can't get Jason Momoa out of my mind. I mean, well, I, I love Jason Momoa, uh huh, and I like Clash of the Titans, and I like Game oh, you're of the Thrones. One? <laughs> yeah, I'm the one person who liked those movies, and I <clears throat> I love Game of Thrones. Yeah, and I love DC. Frankly, you know what? Mm-hmm. I should say it's not that I love DC; it's that I love Batman. Yeah, I really love Batman, and by default. I got to love DC. So I really love DC, and I love all the animated movies DC makes, and I love all the cartoons DC makes. And I'm on board with DC. Uh, then, Dan, I pull up my Twitter, and what do I see? <laughs> you I see, see Rob Zombie emerging Rob from Zombie. the briny deep. I, love, I, loved, I loved Aquaman and Dragula. I love, <laughs> I love Aquaman's song, Dragula. That's uh, yeah. I will say... It's Rob Zombie when I, Aquaman. Congratulations, Rob Zombie. When I first saw the picture... I thought he looked like the Carnival Cruise Line equivalent of Chris Angel. I seen that and I laughed hard. Yeah, and, but I slept on it. Yeah, and now I'm. It's growing on me because, yeah. like, so, like the algae that is clearly growing on him. Yeah, because he he did look like that for a while in the '90s in the comic book. So it is. True to the source I'll, I'll material. Give, I'll give you the beard. I like it, beards. It's it's updated a little bit, but it's still evocative of the source material. It's true to the comic. And I is think the though, problem is, is that we though, haven't man? seen him in motion. Because the pro- a lot of Zack Snyder stuff, it's his stills, they're also saturated and overblown. Yeah. And I think that once we actually see him... In color. Moving around in color, in context, under it'll the, be... Under the flickering... Uh, uh, fluorescent lighting that yeah. they use for all of Man of Steel. Exactly. Like the beginning of Joe vs. the Volcano. It's yeah. All blue and green. Uh, like... They're actually connected, shared cinematic <laughs> universe. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like it, it, it'll be better than we expect because remember X Men Days of Future Past. I love that. When we first saw Quicksilver before the movie, I like that. He looked horrible. I thought he looked cool. You thought he looked cool before I the like, movie came hey, out? I like steampunk glasses. He's not steampunk. He was like he looked like those glasses he, he looked like he fell out of a Spencer's gifts. <laughs> like, Here's the thing. <clears throat> My I w- want to know how do you if you live underwater, how do you get dreadlocks? And also um, I want to know well, he's not washing you, his hair. How do you, <laughs> Also, how well, do you, here's how the do you, thing. How do he's you not tat- underwater in this picture. How do you tattoo? He's underwater? been up on land. It's it's all salty too. So after you leave the <laughs> beach, your hair's all gross and crunchy. How do you how do you tattoo underwater? I think you got the tattoos above water. Yeah, because Atlantis. Hey, like, hey, you know, I'm getting. I'm. I want, hey, hey, tattoo man. Can you tattoo my shoulder to I look just like this armor? Ank. Can you can you can you tattoo my shoulder to look just like this armor I'm ha- I have on my other shoulder? I want to hey. look good all the time. Uh. Couple quick things about Aquaman. Yeah, he uh, he can swim at a speed of one thousand knots. Uh, he's reached that uh, that speed before, which is about one thousand one hundred and fifty miles an hour. Yeah, and he's launched himself sixty feet into the air from the water, uh, and he which means he can easily lift a car and throw it like a football. And he once helped support a ten story burning building for several minutes before firefighters could evacuate everyone. Um, he, another fun fact about Aquaman, he uh, has. F- Aquaman's first origin story was presented in flashback from his debut in More Fun Comics number 73 which came out November 1941. So Aquaman's been around since 1941. That's a lot of water to tread. And <laughs> in 1942, uh there was a story he sailed the ocean. <laughs> he, yeah, in 1942 uh he landed in Iwo Jima. No, uh he <laughs> There's a story where he came across a group of criminals who were hunting seals to poach them for their fur. And so he sees them in the distance. And rather than, uh, you know, just go up to them and be like, hey, guys, you want to not? He hurls a polar bear at them like a javelin. So he uses he's resourceful, this Here's Aquaman. The Here's the thing. People shit on Aquaman. 
I like Aquaman. He's, he's I think cool. He's, I think he's very underrated. Uh, not just oh, you underwater. Mean underwater. <laughs> yeah. um, but he's, I mean, the globe is three quarters water. Yeah. And we don't know anything about it. Like we mentioned a few podcasts ago, there's only been four people or three or four people who've been down to the very bottom of the ocean, one of which is James Cameron, who we have a fact about for today. Um, but he, uh, I like Aquaman. I love ocean creatures. Mm-hmm. They scare me, especially the ones we don't know about that are still underwater, that scientists are like, oh, they don't exist. Three weeks later, oh, here's a giant uh, surprise. squid. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> then they do exist. Uh, we don't know what we're talking about. Um, but I like Aquaman, and I think he's very underrated, and I think he could be done... I'd love to see like an abyss movie. Like as much as I don't like how what Jason Momoa looks like, I don't look, as Aquaman, and I'm not excited for the Zack Snyder universe because DC's scrambling to catch up to Marvel, mm-hmm. and they're doing they they want to be Marvel, but they're doing it the exact opposite that Marvel's doing. Like Marvel's sticking to the storylines as much as yeah. possible, and they're sticking to what the comic books look like, and it's bright colors, and it's like live action comic books. Um, so DC's kind of flubbing it in that aspect but i am kind of excited for the straight aquaman movie only because as much as i like like i want to see an abyss with superheroes Mm -hmm. and i love the movie the abyss yeah i like underwater movies i like the descent yeah i'm more of a cave movie guy (laughs) guy. (laughs) Um, super into spelunking um well let's 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 get into some random facts here for our for our guests on this shorter hostful episode here I was gonna say, uh, let's. We were talking about the Oscars. Yes, we you were. were. You were uh, a little bummed that the Lego Movie got. Uh, would you say we got robbed? It got. Yeah, I, you know, it, it kind of got, got robbed in terms of nominations. Yeah, it got bricked. Got bricked. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go with robbed because that, wor- that works better yeah, with yeah. my segue. Yeah. Uh, the Academy Awards were literally robbed back in 2000. Uh, two men stole packing crates with 55 Oscar statuettes oh. in them, and all but three of the crates were recovered. Uh, after they found them in the trash. Oh, <laughs> they were wow. like, ugh, oh, these are garbage. <laughs> like, we don't need these. I'm only after daytime Emmys. <laughs> uh, and they found a they they found a third one. Uh they found one of the one of the remaining three. Years later, FBI agents found it uh during a drug investigation. What? Yeah. So it was just like sitting in frickin' like Pablo Escobar Jr.'s office or whatever. <laughs> I would if I was a drug dealer, I would have Awards, yeah, I would have dumb awards. Meryl like Streep, yeah, because you can, especially like old old celebrities, they sell all their old stuff. I yeah. just have like a mantle of <laughs> guns and stuffed creatures and entertainment awards. <laughs> just, uh, just, and that's how you get on the watch list. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine how, uh, come, how come nobody's made a, a drug movie like Scarface or or? Uh, um, what was that training day with yeah. Denzel? And like he take he goes into the drug dude's magpies ain't yeah. got nothing on me. <laughs> they go into the drug dude's house to raid it or whatever. Or the dude's the dude's uh, like a new drug guy. Like like I'm training to be a drug guy and mm-hmm. I want, I'm I'm a, I'm a young mafioso and I go over to Aristotle's house and he's in a suit coat and he's got half naked girls everywhere and he's all talking like he's talking maybe he's Russian or whatever I don't know. So just normal Aristotle. Yeah, he's in normal Aristotle and he leans against he's he's asking me, "Do you have what it takes? Would you kill your mother for me? To are you that full of honor?" And he leans on his fireplace next to just <laughs> Emmys and Grammy. <laughs> you see what this is? This is a kid Choice Award, and it's, and it's not even. Yeah, he's got the he's got a surfboard hanging up for the Teens Choice Awards, and then he's got he's got those dumb clear like, and they're not dumb, but if you've won one of these, they're not dumb, but they're kind of silly. <laughs> but they're just like those clear crystal like author awards. He's got some of those too. <laughs> you you wrote the Hunger Games. <laughs> It's like that, whatever, like those those crystal triangles, and yeah, like those crystal angels. <laughs> oh man, those crystal skulls. That'd be so funny. Um, well, <laughs> speaking of awards going to the wrong person, <laughs> there is a contingency plan in place yes. if they announce the wrong winner on stage at like the it. Oscars. Say someone goes rogue and like Adela Dazim is announced as the winner, the yeah. wickedly talented Adela Dazim. <laughs> Uh, so if that happens and it's never happened at the award show to date, yeah. but if it happens or if it happened in the past, you'll know what, you'll know what happens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the accounting firm PricewaterhouseCoopers, who is tasked with tallying up all the votes, they're the official firm. They tally up all the Oscar votes to tabulate who wins. 
So the firm's partners memorize the winners in all 24 categories. And if the wrong person's announced on stage, they are authorized to go out on stage and stop the show. Oh, wow. So they're able to be like, no. That's not who won. Meryl Streep did not win for Into the Woods. Sit down, Meryl Streep. Go home. (laughs) Go home, Meryl Few. They actually believe Streep in Streep Owitz. They wouldn't even use Streep because everybody in Hollywood just acts like they're best friends with Meryl and they're like, oh, Meryl. Oh, She's Meryl. like, I don't know anyone here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they used to, uh, they used to announce all the winners ahead of time. Oh, wow. Yeah, back in the day. Um, they used to, pu- they used to make an exception for newspapers so they could publish a list of winners at 11 p.m. on the night of the event. So, oh, there we go. Uh, the problem alert. was, the problem was in 1940, the Los Angeles Times published the results in advance of the award show and spoiled it before the ceremony got underway. So, the next year, the Academy, ever vindictive, followed by sealing, they sealed all the results in envelopes and the contents were kept secret until they were revealed on stage. Oh. Really? So that's yeah. why the envelopes are sealed? Yes. Yeah, because, because the, the LA Times couldn't LA Times. keep their frickin' trap shut, you dummies. Hey, LA Times. If you're listening to this, you're doing it wrong. You're a newspaper. Yeah, you're a newspaper. <laughs> Nailed you, nerds. Currently, wait till you're done when everybody has electronic things, like tablets. Yeah. The newspaper. They deliver a fresh tablet every day, and I just recycle it and throw it out. Yeah, welcome welcome to... Th- Two thousands. That'll that'll teach you. Everybody reads Huffington. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I print out the entire Huffington Post website and read it <laughs> every morning. I just print I, it all out. I print it out on. Yeah, I spend seven thousand dollars a day tri-phone, reading that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and obviously, you can't attend the Oscars today without yeah. uh, an invitation. But back in the day, it was a private affair. But the original Oscars held in 1929. The very first ceremony was in 1929, and held uh, at the Holly- at the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. Guess how much it cost to get a ticket? Four dollars. Close. Five dollars. Five dollars. That's too much. I know. Back then, <laughs> that was like a million dollars. Ah, the one percent taking over our award uh, shows. I wouldn't pay. Five dollars for anything. Yeah, and for, I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay five dollars for a Subway sub, cold yeah. cut combo. And you, ha- you actually have to pay five dollars to actually get a, a statue of your creative arts Oscar. <laughs> if, you get, if you win a technical Oscar, you I, have to pay money to have the statue. <laughs> I um, would pay five dollars for. A yeah, best Oscar boy for a best boy. Can I get a key grip Oscar? Five dollars. <laughs> I'll want two of them. One for my mother. <laughs> uh, I mentioned Subway's cold cut combo because I because I, I have a, a fact here about that. Oh, Obviously, wow! You know the drill on here. Things only get mentioned if we have trivia. Uh, Subway's cold cut combo: all turkey meats, buddy. All Sorry, ham fanatics. Yeah, you ham and salami. Take a hike, roast beef heads. Yeah, you bologna. You and bologna vegetarians. Fans. You veggie mites. Pretend it's just meaty lettuce. <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, the cold cut combo is stacked with turkey-based meats. Turkey-based ham. I didn't know that was a thing. Turkey-based what? salami. Turkey-based ham. Turkey-based bologna. Why? You can't call it ham at that point. No, you can't. I mean, I guess you can call it whatever you want, yeah. but you're you're eating a lie. Yeah, it's it's uh it's topped with crisp vegetables, also turkey. I don't know about crisp. <laughs> it's topped with vegetables that someone who barely understands what you just told them yeah. took out of like a container that's been sitting there for hours. Yeah, yeah. With that oily rainbows on I'm it. always shocked I I'm less I'm less shocked and horrified at Subway than I am at a place like Chipotle or uh, just even other uh, restaurants in the area, like there's one of my favorite Mexican places I used to go to all the time in Los Angeles called uh, Los Tacos. Yeah. I one time went in there, I timed it from the time I ordered my food to the time it was being wrapped in front of me. Yeah. Six seconds. That's not healthy. No. <laughs> no. I was like, this is NASCAR. This is not okay. I don't. I don't want to be able to consume anything from that could be ordered. And manufactured in the time that it could take yeah. to film a Vine video. I mean, video. They, they had it. it let, that's still a second to spare. <laughs> I don't want... That's an incomplete Vine. I don't, I don't want my food fitting in a Vine video. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, get two, then you have an Instagram video <laughs> Instagram with video. seconds to spare. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was still good. I mean, I think the thing was they just prepare a lot of the ingredients in yeah. advance and just have them like chilling there. So it's just a matter of heating up the tortilla, slopping on the yeah. beef slops. And then, yeah, but uh, even in six seconds, like how fast are they? I couldn't even s- grab a spoon. And stick it into the meat in six seconds. <laughs> I, really, I thought you were just going to stop and grab a spoon. I can't even grab, I can't even a, grab a spoon in six I'm seconds. I'm a very slow person. Hey, uh, Dan, you mentioned the Oscars. And I sure did. Yeah, and we mentioned the ocean. Hey, and, that oh, has things to Are you to talking mention. about Academy Award nominated, possibly winning, I don't know at this exact moment, director James Cameron, I'm, perchance? Yes, I'm talking about James Cameron. You know, uh, The Abyss, Avatar, Sorry, I meant, awards. I meant Oscar award-winning director James Cameron, yeah, yeah, he's for won, sure. He's won many, many things. <laughs> yeah, he has. Um, he's won my heart. Uh, here's the thing about James Cameron. He used to drive a truck. He was a truck driver. What? Yes. He's uh, just like us. Yeah, he quit his job, Dan. Oh, man. Don't quit he, your day job, Cameron. He, he, quit his, <laughs> he, quit his, uh, his, he quit his truck driver job. Do you know why he quit his truck driver job? Why did he quit his truck driver job? Because Why he, would you quit a plum well, job like that where you can do all the speed you want, listen to all the radio you want, yeah, Bob Seger. and park at all the roadside diners you <laughs> yeah, want? Yeah, and pick up all those, uh, what are they called, the trailer lizards or the truck lizards? Um, something lizards, it's all like the prostitutes <laughs> on truck stops. Are yeah, called the, lot uh, lizards, lot lizards, I yes, think is what yeah. they're called. <laughs> not that I know that. I, you know, hey, I'm not, I don't, listen. They're hauling so, ass, they're, literally. <laughs> Uh, James Cameron quit his job as a truck driver what? to enter the film industry after seeing the original 1990, uh, 1997. The 1997 Star Wars classic, he, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. <laughs> he, uh, James Cameron seen Star Wars in 1977, and he quit, his, he quit his job. Yeah, then he went and he made some films because Ooh. he was so inspired. He read Sid Field's book, Screenplay. Which, if you guys don't know, is... A legendary book on screenwriting, but yeah. like the go-to book. Like, forget about Save the Cat. Throw that away. Yeah, that like Sid Field screenplay is like the, the textbook. Cat. Don't save the cat. I'm allergic to cats. I would let that cat burn. I would burn the tree down. Fuck cats. Uh, yes. Don't no or don't. Don't <laughs> check your check your state uh, statutes for check zoophilia. Your, check, yeah, for zoophilia for for bestiality. Did you read that so quick sidebar? Did you read that interview with the guy who was in love with a dolphin and had a romantic relationship with a dolphin? Was he from Florida? Yes. Yes, of course he was. Yes. No, I didn't read that. But that was. A good <laughs> I don't know if he was from Florida, but it happened in Florida. Yeah, of course I did. Uh, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Florida is. The international waters of dry land. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's uh, Alan Strickland Williams has a funny joke. Um, I'm going to slaughter it. I don't know it verbatim, but it has to do with if if uh, if the South is the Walmart of the United States, Florida is the McDonald's in the Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Alan and you Strickland can't spell slaughter without laughter. <laughs> slaughter is how I pronounce yeah. it. Slaughter. Uh, I'm going to this slaughter house. Oh, the slaughter is so funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, he... Uh, he he uh, read Sid Field's screenplay book, and it occurred to him that integrating science and art was possible. So then he wrote the 10-minute science fiction script with two friends titled Xenogenesis. Xeno Not to be Genesis. confused with Terminator Genesis. Or Sega Genesis. Uh, you mean Terminator Genesis? Genesis. A Genesis. <laughs> Genesis. Where are my robots? Uh if The Rock, I've heard The Rock refers to himself as the Viagra of sequels, which The Rock is awesome. You put him in any sequel, yeah. I will go see it. I love The Rock. Uh, Jai Courtney is like the uh, the impotence of sequels. Like, don't put him in movies. Jai Courtney is like, sure the, he's a nice he's like the gas station wiener pill. Yeah. Where like, it's just like, <laughs> it will give you much jungle lovability. Yeah. <laughs> I look. I'm sure he's a nice dude, but come on, dude. Die Hard Five sucked, and uh, everything else he's been in. Is he's, he looks like uh, if you booted up a video game, he looks like the generic character creation model in Create a Player. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Whereas, <laughs> yeah. just like oh, anything but this. Oh, I'm sure he's a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> forget about it, Jai uh, Courtney. Uh, Jai Courtney, I'm sure. Yeah. You, Jai Courtney, I know you're listening because you're a big fan of this podcast yeah. and you're always tweeting about us. Um, but I'm, yes, I'm. Oh my god! Stop tweeting about us. I'm sure. I'm you're sure, being crazy. Look, Jai, you're a really nice guy, but just stop being in movies I like. Yeah, <laughs> just go see movies with us that we <laughs> yeah. like. Yeah. 
You don't have to be in everything. Although I, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt for Suicide Squad. So don't blow it. Well, only reason I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt is because Margot Robbie's in there and Will Smith is in there. Will Smith. It's actually we're gonna find out he plays Hitch, and this is what happened after Hitch. Like Hitch becomes a super assassin. Yeah. After he has an allergic reaction that messes up his face permanently. I mean, it's obvious Margot Robbie and Will Smith are having an affair, right? You heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, because from everything I've heard about Will Smith is that he is... Uh, yes, he is on the down low, as it were. <laughs> the DL. Yeah, is that that is, he... That's been like the constant rumor yeah. I've heard for a number of years, obviously. Not that there's, there's anything Just Google any celebrity plus, is they gay? Yeah, and it'll come up, did you mean John Travolta? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything um, wrong with that. I like Will Smith. I will see Suicide Squad because it's, you know, got superheroes. Yeah. And I do that because I have to. I'll take what they give me until I'm sick of it in two years when there's 20 coming out a year. Um, Eventually there's going to be a surplus and people will stop seeing the movies because there's like 30 of them coming out in the next five years. Oh, yeah. We'll approach, um, we'll there's approach gonna be a some point. sort of oversaturation. Like so many cows, yeah, there's so. a tipping point. Like a Malcolm Gladwell novel. It's yeah. a tipping point. It's a tipping point. Um, yeah, so that's a f- cool thing about James Cameron. Yeah, and uh, for that, uh, <laughs> this is a cool little tidbit about Xenogenesis, that 10-minute screenplay they shot yes. the script. So uh, they raised money. Uh, he had two, with two friends. They raised money. They rented camera lenses, film stock, a studio space. They shot 35 millimeter. Then they dismantled the camera just so they could see how it worked. They're very curious guys. And they spent the first half day of the shoot trying to figure out how to get it running. Oh, wow. So That's wild. Yeah. James Cameron, now he's uh, only making Avatar movies until the end of time. He has gone on record saying the next one will make you shit yourself. Yeah? Yes. Does that have the brown note played yeah. throughout the entire movie? Jake Sully, brown note. Bah. Bah. Oh, no. <laughs> I shit myself in Avatar world and in real life. <laughs> um, but uh, fun fact about Avatar... So they are, I think, transforming part of Disney's Animal Kingdom in Florida into oh, an Avatar land. I believe it. And from what I've heard, I, I, I had a chance to speak with uh, a, a gentleman who does some consulting work with Disney and the Imagineers. James Cameron? Uh, yes. Uh, we call him Jimmy Camps. Jimmy Camps. Jimmy Camps. Uh, no, it wasn't Jam Cam. Uh, it was another guy. Um, it, it, he was telling me they, the stuff they're working on is very cool. They were trying to create these sort of... Uh, uh, the plant life, when you touch it, it'll have like it'll be bioluminescent and reactive, and like it'll send ripples out throughout the whole thing. Oh, the wow. technology they're trying to work on there sounds very cool. Yeah. I'm almost more excited to see how they'd realize an, an interactive Avatar theme park than they would another Avatar movie because by the time it comes out, it'll have been nearly a decade. Absolutely. Uh, when did it come out? 2009. Something like that. When's the last time you thought about Avatar or like you like you saw Avatar merchandise? You saw someone wearing an Avatar shirt? I'll be honest. Uh, like Every yesterday, day. only because in my group thread, and I have a group thread with, uh, not to name drop, my buddy Joel David Moore. He was on this oh, podcast. Oh, past and um, future guest slash star of ABC. Yeah. Is it ABC? Uh, ABC's Forever. Hit forever, yeah. Yeah, uh, I like that show. After Airing after Agent Carter, which is fucking awesome. Agent Carter, it's if you're so not watching good. it, you're wrong. Hey, Gotham, be like Agent Carter. Hey, Gotham. What's up? <laughs> Uh, and one of one of the our jokes in our thread is we have a, a picture of a Norm Spellman doll that we'll always text each other with like we'll put dumb comments yeah. and dumb we'll make them saying something really stupid. <laughs> so that's the only reason why I've thought about Avatar merchandise. Gotcha. But Avatar came out in two thousand and nine. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, uh, I I also think about it pretty regularly because I have a uh, eBay alert for unobtainium. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, I'm I'm more excited about how much more they're gonna. Like inflate the ticket prices to that park if they build that. That's oh, a hundred percent. So much. Yeah, expensive. I'd like to see a crossover between that and Harry Potter, where Harry Potter has to battle avatars. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed that their Disney is making so much Star Wars land because they're going to get rid of some other cool stuff. Probably. Like, uh, uh, like I like the Buzz like Star Lightyear. Tours. Star Tours. <laughs> get rid of it to make more Star Tours. Make more. Buzz Lightyear is now going to be Greedos. Greedos. Shoot firster. It will be. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Han Solo shoot well, you know the thing. You know what I like to have when I'm at a uh, theme park? Yes, a nice fountain soda. Uh, I love fountain soda. And you know what? People ask me a lot. I'm at a restaurant. I order a Coke. They're like, Pepsi okay? And you know what? Pepsi is okay. It's very. I'm okay. all right with it. Pepsi is better. I, I don't. I don't think one's Back. better. I think they're no, both equally important. Okay. Because fair. I just like soda. I'm an equal opportunity mouth based employer. But I gotta wonder. 
How did they come up with the name Pepsi? Where did that name come from? If only there was some way we could find out before we have to wrap things up. Yeah, I like Pepsi. I'm a huge fan. Um, well, that's good. But what did, you know, did you know that no, it wasn't no. always called Pepsi? No, what was it called? Well, back in the day, it was called Brad's Drink. Uh, yeah, give me, can I get a two beef chalupas, a one of your uh, Doritos tacos, um, I'll take a Baja Blast, uh, and can I get can a I, large Brad's Drink? Can I get a Coca-Cola? Brad's Drink, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Brad? I want my own. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it was developed it? in uh, New Bern, North Carolina, in the United States of Brad America in 1893 by Caleb Bradham, who made it at his drugstore. Always these pharmacists just messing around, making Brad's drinks. Making Brad's drinks. They renamed it uh, a couple years later in 1898. They called it Pepsi-Cola because it was named after the digestive enzyme, the Pepsi. digestive enzyme pepsin. And the cola nuts used in the recipe. Yeah, I'll take a Pepsin cola, please. Uh, yes, I'd like. Uh, <laughs> it's because there's a little bit of Brad in every glass. Oh, we put, next time on you, Dateline, you guys put cocaine in this. I put Brad in this. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, unfortunately, yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta wipe. hard out, yeah. as they call it in the biz. We got a hard, we got a hard in, then a hard out, then hard in. Then hard out. Then we got a hard and on. We, and then we have a hard off. Uh, then, yeah. <laughs> That's just when you compare wieners. Yes. <laughs> no, yeah. mine's harder. We're going to go across the streams. I have more blood in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, is this NSFW. Uh, or, depending on where you work, it's totally work appropriate. Totally work appropriate. <laughs> um, uh, we measure wiener blood. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Uh, well, listen, Raffle, guys. thank you for being on the show. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being on the show. Dan, thank you for uh, being on the show. Aristotle, thank you for recording the show. Yeah. Uh, let's just go around the table. Aristotle, what do you got coming up that you want to promote? Zine Melt at Meltdown. Zine Melt at Meltdown. If you don't know what it is, go to uh, nerdmeltla.com. <laughs> I hope that's the website. Or just look up Meltdown. It's like I'm guessing it is an independent zine uh, event for people making their own comics, stuff like that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Do you know what it is offhand? March 28th, Zine Melt. Be there or be out of my heart. I like it. Dan, what do you have coming up? How, what, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, you you gotta... can find me online. I am at Osteoferocious on Instagram and Twitter. It's like the harrowing bone disease, but with a fun twist. Uh, and I also have a book available for what? pre-order. Really? I wrote a book. You, you wrote a book? I wrote a book. I don't remember you talking about that for the last year. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. Hank Kingsley. Uh, yeah, so my book is finally available for pre-order. I'm very excited about it. It's called 100 Things Avengers Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die. Yep. You can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or just meet me in the parking lot behind the IHOP off uh, the 405. And I will be there, and I will take your information, and I will turn that into a receipt that you can deduct come tax time. Please note, you cannot deduct this come tax time. Uh, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's where you can find me. And Razzle. Where can they find you on the uh, World Wide Web? They can find me at my name is Razzle Two on Twitter. They can uh, you know listen to my other podcasts I have over on Wolf picking Pop. favorites. Yeah, I'm sure most of you already are because uh, you know you guys are very cool. Um, you can also uh, if you live in the Irvine area, I'll be at the Irvine Improv on March fourth at eight p.m. It's a Wednesday. I'll also be uh, I believe April fourth here in Hollywood at the the Hollywood Improv. Um, I'm going to be in New York at the end of March doing some shows, doing a couple shows there. Uh, you can do all of that. And then um, go see the movie The Kingsman. Yeah, see Kingsman The Secret Service. Go see the movie The Kingsman Secret Service. It is so fun. It's great. Go see that. Um, I'd like to uh, publicly plug... Um, Agent Carter, watch that. Yeah, see Agent Carter while you can. I think there's like a couple more episodes. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah, do that and uh, go buy the game Blockus. It's a very fun card game. It's a, not a card game. It's a very fun board game. For also people. buy Game of Thrones, the board game. Yeah, watch from Game Fantasy of Thrones. Flight and then, Madman, I'm just going to plug a lot of things I like. Yeah. Uh, buffalo wings, yeah. um, smoothies, muscle uh, milk, Skittles, just, more Skittles. Uh, me time. Me time. Um, moisturizing. Moisturizing. Yeah. Um, and guys, if you want to talk to the podcast, guess what? You can do that. We are online. We are at TWL Podcast on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook. Today we learned with Razzle and Dan. And if you want to send us an email, you're in luck. Today we learned podcast at gmail.com. That's G as in grads drink.
Grads drink. It's a drink you give to graduates. Graduates drink. It's uh, got a little bit of a, you know, then you got, I'm not even going to, let's fuck it, Bill Cosby's drink. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You guys get it because you guys read things. <laughs> uh, this has been fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It's a yeah. little fun bonus, little fun uh, new thing. Yeah. We've never done a host full and we're exactly. at episode we, uh, 70. Blah, 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 blah. Who knows? We may do them again. Yeah, and uh, yeah, only time knows? will tell. I like it. So, uh, yeah, keep listening and tell your friends, and we appreciate it. A lot. A lot. Cool. <laughs> Already. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Aristotle. Doctor. 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 Cool. All right. Uh, Till next time. See ya. As always. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Now leaving Nerdist.com. Nerdist.com. <laughs>